Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral researcher based in Vienna, Austria. Nowadays, a lot of us want to track our sleep to improve our sleep quality. And the Withing ScanWatch is the latest in a range of devices that can do this. I received the ScanWatch before its official release and I compared its sleep predictions against a portable scientific EEG monitor that several of my colleagues are using in scientific studies. In this video, I will answer the question, how does the sleep tracking of the scan watch compare to the sleep tracking of an EEG device that can actually measure your brain waves? So how did I test the scan watch? Well, for eight nights, I wore both the scan watch and this portable scientific EEG monitor to bed. And in this video, I'll specifically look at three different things. First, I want to see how accurately the different sleep stages are predicted by the scan watch. Second, I want to check if the scan watch can accurately detect the moment that I fall asleep and the moment that I wake up. Now, for me, this is one of the most important things to track since like most people, I'm simply not getting enough sleep because I'm not going to bed on time or waking up too soon. Third, it's important to note that the scan watch cannot detect REM sleep. It just predicts light sleep and deep sleep. And of course, if you're awake, but I want to know in those cases where I was in REM sleep, what does the scan watch say that my sleep stage was? This video is the second in a series of four videos. In my previous video, I did a first test and unboxing of the scan watch. In this video, I will discuss sleep prediction. In the next video, I'll check if the problems I originally had with heart rate detection after testing the device for just two days actually persisted in the next few weeks. And in the last video, I will discuss the accuracy of the oxygen saturation measurements and the step counter. As always, since I don't want to waste your time, timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline of the video. The device I'll be testing the scan watch against is called the Hypnodyne ZMAX, which is an electroencephalography or EEG device specifically designed for sleep research. This device basically measures your brain waves and muscle movements in your face, and this is the main way sleep researchers study sleep. To show you why scientists use brain waves to study sleep, here you can see the raw EEG data from one of the nights. I will not go into details, but without knowing anything about EEG, you can already very clearly see the sleep cycles that I went through. This shows you the power of using EEG for sleep measurements. To go from raw brain waves to actual sleep stages, I had to go through each of these nights manually. So for each 30 second interval, I had to say what sleep stage I was in. So light sleep, deep sleep, REM sleep or awake. This is similar to how it's done by specialists in sleep studies. Now for each night, this took me about an hour. So it took me about eight hours total which is why I stopped after eight nights, since I figured this was enough data and I'd basically spent my whole Sunday doing this. Now the scan watch on the other hand uses very different data to predict your sleep stages. It uses your movement and your heart rate, and maybe it can use your oxygen saturation in the future. But as you can imagine, if you don't have brainwave data, it's much more difficult to predict your sleep stages. But let's have a look at how well it did. So here you see one night of recording with on top the EEG device and on the bottom the scan watch. As you can see at this night, I went to bed at about 11 and I woke up a little bit before nine. So it was a quite a long night, but it was also a weekend day. And on the Y axis here, so the vertical axis, you can see the different sleep stages. Now the Withings device only predicts wake, light and sleep. So those are the ones I plotted here. The scientific EEG device predicts more sleep stages. So we have wake, REM, light sleep and deep sleep. And light sleep is actually divided into two subparts, So N1 and N2 light sleep. To put it really simply, we can say that the N1 sleep is slightly lighter light sleep and N2 is slightly deeper light sleep. Overall, we can see that the structure of the night is at least somewhat similar. So we start awake, then we go through some light and deep sleep stages with a wake phase in between in both of them. And then at the end of the night, I have more light sleep and awake time, which is also true for both of them. Of course, the scan watch does not detect REM sleep. So that's missing here. The one inconsistency I can see is that the scan watch said I was awake for the last part of the night. Whereas according to the EEG device, I was still asleep. And when I actually wake up, I switch off the EEG device. So then there should be no more data. So there was still data recorded. But overall, this night looks pretty okay for the scan watch. Now, if you look at another example night here, we see it's maybe a little bit less good. Still, the overall pattern looks look somewhat similar. So more deep sleep at the beginning of the night and less deep sleep at the end. Though this one, I would say, is not great. 
I measured eight nights in total and I will not go through all of them in detail, but I will show them at least now. So if you want, you can go and look at them in more detail. Now, overall, I would say the structures are sometimes somewhat similar, sometimes less similar, but there were two nights that were really less good. And these I will show here. And this is one of those two nights. What you can see is that I actually went to bed a little bit before midnight, but the scan watch did not detect any sleep until about 3 a.m. So it missed about half my night. And there was a second night where this was also the case. So again, I went to bed a little bit before midnight and only after 3 a.m. was the first sleep detected by the scan watch. And this is two out of eight nights, so it's quite significant. So that's kind of an issue, but let's now look at some numbers to actually see how well the scan watch is doing. So what I showed here is over all eight nights, the percentage of deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and awake I had. Now, according to the EEG device, I had about 15% deep sleep, 56% light sleep, 22% REM sleep, and about 5% awake. And this is about the same as I get for the large EEG monitor that I've used for several of the other tests. If we look at the scan watch, on the other hand, we see that I get 0% REM sleep, which we know since it cannot predict REM sleep. We see I get about 53% light sleep, which is about the same as I get with the EEG device. I get much more deep sleep, about 30%, and also much more time awake. To look into a bit more detail about which sleep stages are predicted wrongly, I've created what is called a confusion matrix. On the left here, you see the scan watch, and on top the EEG device, and I've collapsed the two light sleep stages into one light sleep stage, just for easy comparison. And the total percentage in this matrix is 100%. So what do these percentages actually mean? Well, to explain that, let's look at some examples. So for instance, this 18% here, this 18% means that 18% out of my eight nights was predicted as deep sleep by the scan watch, while it was actually light sleep as predicted by the EEG device. Or for instance, 31% here means that 31% of my nights was predicted as light sleep by both the scan watch and the EEG device. So if you look at this quickly, we can see, of course, that only a small part of my night was spent awake, about 5%, and about half of this was predicted correctly by the scan watch. Now, an arguably even easier way of looking at this is by changing the matrix a little bit. And this was actually a comment from one of my subscribers, so thank you. So what I can do is actually make each column here, so each vertical line, 100%. So this total deep sleep here sums up to 100%, light sleep, REM sleep, awake. So what this plot shows is out of the 100% of actual deep sleep, according to the EEG monitor, how much was predicted as deep sleep, light sleep, and awake by the scan watch. And we see that of all my deep sleep, about 40% was predicted as deep sleep by the scan watch, but also 43% was predicted as light sleep. So that's not very good. Light sleep, it does a bit better. So what was actually light sleep, 55% is indeed predicted as light sleep by the scan watch, but 45% is predicted as deep sleep or awake. So one thing I was really curious about was REM sleep because the scan watch cannot predict REM sleep. So what does it actually say REM sleep is? And what we see it, most of it is light sleep, but it's also predicted as some deep sleep and some awake. And given the fact that I spent most of my night in light sleep, it makes sense that it mostly says it is light sleep. Finally, let's look at awake. Now we can see that a lot of the time that I was awake was indeed predicted as awake, but a lot of it was also predicted as light sleep and deep sleep. But again, this is slightly biased due to the fact that about two nights, about half the night was predicted as awake, even though I was actually asleep already. So this percentage might be a bit biased towards also predicting some light sleep and deep sleep as awake. So overall, I would say that the scan watch can detect when you're awake. Now to summarize, if we mark what it gets right, we see that deep sleep is not predicted that well, about 40% is predicted correctly. Light sleep is done a bit better and awake is also sort of okay. So this is better than you would expect by random, but still I would say it is not that great. Finally, as I mentioned, I want to know, can the scan watch actually detect when I wake up and fall asleep? Because for a lot of us, that's the most important thing. We need to know how much time do we spend in bed because that keeps us accountable for getting enough sleep. And that's what I've plotted here. So on the horizontal axis here is the time difference between when the scan watch said I woke up or fell asleep and the EEG device said I woke up and fell asleep. In yellow is waking up and in blue is falling asleep. And as you can see, in most cases, it only differs by a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes max, but there are a few outliers. So here we see one case that I showed you before, where the scan watch said I woke up about an hour before I actually woke up. But mostly there are these two cases, which I showed you before, 
where about half the night it did not detect any sleep. So the first half of the night was missing. So it said I fell asleep much later than I actually did. So overall, for most nights, it seems to do kind of okay. But there are these two outliers that are my major problem. When it misses half of your night of sleep, then it's just not that reliable. And it's for two out of eight nights. So that's 25% of my nights. So that's one thing I hope they will fix in the next update of the firmware. Since this is still a relatively early release version, they still have time to update this and hopefully with this information they will change that. So those are the results, but of course it's also important to note some of the limitations of the tests that I did. First of all, I only tested the device on me, so I don't know how they will generalize to other people, but I assume at least it's somewhat representative for the quality of the device. Second, I only tested it for eight nights and to do a better test, I would prefer to have more nights. So in the future, I'll test that. Second, normally I use a bigger scientific EEG device as a reference, which has more electrodes and can measure your brain waves in more detail. So it can probably predict your sleep even better. However, due to Corona and due to the fact that I only had the scan watch for two weeks so far, I was not able to use that device yet. However, in the future, I hope to be able to test that. Finally, I'm not a professional sleep scorer. So a professional sleep scorer is somebody who goes through the raw EEG data and assigns the different sleep stages to each part of the night. Of course, I watched the tutorials and I did my best, but maybe somebody might disagree with exactly which parts I marked as light sleep, deep sleep, REM sleep, and awake. So overall, I would say that the scan watch is not great yet at predicting sleep. It can sort of detect when I wake up and fall asleep, but even that it got wrong for two out of eight nights, so 25% of the nights. And sleep stages are also not predicted that greatly, and it even misses REM sleep altogether. Now hopefully they will fix this in the future with software updates since this is still an early release version, but for now I'll be relying on my Aura Ring, my Fitbit, and of course the Z Max for tracking my sleep. However, I guess I did not and I would not buy the scan watch for its sleep tracking. I bought it because it can measure ECG, measure your oxygen saturation, your steps, and your heart rate, and also because it looks kind of good for a fitness tracker. If you're interested in those things as well, in my next two videos, I'll discuss the accuracy of the heart rate, but also of the SpO2 sensor and the step counter. So stay tuned for that. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. So are you planning on buying the ScanWatch and what do you think of all of his features? Well, let us know in the comments below. For now, I wish you a wonderful day and see you in the next video.